Hit it again. Hey everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flare Mouse. Today we have a pretty prototype projectile to demonstrate for you. They're also pretty long at 41 millimeters and pretty light at only 9.1 grams. These were designed and created by Michael Smith using a clear blue special resin that's supposed to be strong enough for functional parts and machine prototypes. But will they be strong enough to withstand nearly 20,000 G's of acceleration force? And will this design be stable in flight? There's only one way to find out, but I guarantee this, it's going to be a wild ride, folks. Welcome back, Tau Flater folks. Jeff, Officer Greg out here with you. Doug is somewhere over there. I think he's picking up uh, brass off the ground. <laughs> Michael in Boise has sent us some blue rounds here lightweight blue rounds that we are, he didn't name them for us, so we're gonna call them the Blue Falcons. These rounds, um, very light. They're sort of a, what would you call it? Sort of a bullet shape with a spiral fluting in there. I'm sure Jeff will show you one here on the tabletop. And we're gonna give them a try through a rifled barrel. These are a prototype design that Michael sent us. He's trying out, wants us to try out for him. And we're gonna see what kind of damage they'll do downrange and uh, if they even fly straight. So, Michael. Idaho represent. Hopefully these things uh, turn out good. <laughs> Otherwise I'm coming for you on my next flight. Oh, it's a blue falcon. That seemed to have hit the wood again. Yeah. Bagged up your clay. Oh, that's all right. It didn't really hit the clay much. It flew down range. I guess it was toppling, tum tumbling. It was kind of doing this thing. And then uh, evidently it struck the wooden block first because we found a little blue shatter. Didn't shatter. you find a big piece of it left? Uh, yeah, where did the thing go? There right there. Oh, okay. That's what's left. So it's a kind of a spirally thing, fluted? Yeah. I'm not sure what those do, but... We're calling this the Blue Falcon. <laughs> that weighs almost nothing. It's got uh, no weight to it. Blue, clear plastic. We found shards of it everywhere. It looked like broken glass almost in the wood yeah. on the edge of the clay. So. Yeah. There it well, is. Well, it's got to go through rifling. It's it. Yeah. Full rifling. Let's give it a try on something else. Yeah, absolutely. Now we were trying to push these as fast as we could, and only a high-speed camera can really tell you what's actually happening. Now we can clearly see that we had pretty good spin on the projectile, but it was still corkscrewing through the air. Now it's possible that the fluting on the nose of the projectile are causing a negative stability issue. The accuracy wasn't terrible, it wasn't great, but the most surprising thing is they didn't shatter during acceleration. Okay, you over the chrono kind of? Yeah, barely over? Over the chrono. Okay. And whenever you're ready. All right, at the orange triangle. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Michael, those things were all cattywampus, bro. I found a little shard here on the ground. It, it, it held together though, it flew in one piece. That's, it, it made it out of the barrel in one piece. That's the first okay. step. Apparently it impacted a little bit to the right side of the uh, heart. And I don't know if you guys can see inside here. Can you see inside the jug what we found? Um. Oh, there it is. Geez. That's, that was already there. <laughs> From the factory. What do you do about it? In test number two, again we have that crazy corkscrewing motion going on. It was only a couple inches off from the target, not terrible. And traveling over 2,000 feet per second still does a lot of damage despite only weighing about one third of an ounce. Now, to me, something that flies so erratically should have a very difficult time hitting anything at 20 yards. Yet, once again, it's only a couple inches from the point of aim. Okay, see what it does to a Kevlar vest. Yeah, okay. Where are you aim at, the little white spot? I'm gonna aim at the little white spot, let's see. I'm ready. Here we go. I don't know, I, I, it is. might have keyholed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you think? Here we go. Looking at the shape of the hole in Doug's shirt, 
seems to me like it's probably flying completely sideways at the yeah, time, at the time impact. of impact. And this, Ooh. Is, this is what we found inside of Doug. It looks like something, uh, well, what's his name? Walter White would have made on uh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> Blue Crystal. So, um, you know, made a little bit of a hole in there. Didn't do anything really to the Kevlar, just kind of stretched it out. Got some gray, gray goo in there, but um, sort of broke apart. I think it's kind of like kind of brittle. And then obviously there's a flying straight problem that it seems to be having. So yeah, if you got a just, problem just, being straight, what have we learned? Just because it's bullet shaped doesn't mean it'll fly no. like a bullet. <laughs> How many bullet shaped things have we seen just tumble all the way down? Right yeah, I mean, yeah. It just doesn't seem to. It's matter. that. Diablo shape, the air ah, rifle yes. pellet. That's the Diablo. that's the winning shape. It's that's magic. Right. Yeah, that one almost always stabilizes. It did, it does, yeah. In test number three, again, a few inches off from the point of aim. Again, we see the, the weird corkscrewing action during the flight. Now, is it possible that we're just spinning these too fast? Well, in the next test, we'll find out. Or is it just Greg's poor aim? Well, not really. This is a test shot that we did before we started shooting, and you can see that with the proper round, he's very accurate. Maybe full rifling is too much. Let's try it with just a rifle choke. i to try all these different variables, just you never know. Yep. I'm ready. Aluminum plate. Here we go, aluminum plate. 21.50, yep. I couldn't fit any more powder in the shells. I couldn't. That's it. In this test, we're using the rifle choke, which is only about five inches of rifling at the very end of the barrel. And as you can see, we had very little spin compared to using full rifling. Now, the projectile certainly wasn't stable, but this time we did not see that corkscrewing action going on. Okay, lead plate. Here we go, on the T. Okay, you're, you're being picky there. Anywhere on the lead plate. Alright. I'm ready. I'll try for the T. Oh, that was close. Oh, that was close. Hit the T. Looks like it hit the T, but it, I think it hit sideways. Yeah, they're flying sideways. And of course, it didn't do much to the mass of that lead plate. Nope. Lead plate just left. Loft. La, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> In this test, we're getting a closer look at what the projectile looks like shortly after it leaves the barrel, and it was actually quite stable up to a point, then it started the corkscrewing action. Accuracy was also a little better at this range. You know, a lot of our viewers think that um, if it's unstable really close, you know, at 10, 20 yards, just give it more distance it'll stabilize itself sure why not that makes perfect scientific I've, I've, sense i've seen at least a hundred comments saying that yeah we just would have given it more distance it's in the same family with i had somebody the other day tell me that rounds actually accelerate once they leave the muzzle oh my gosh not the... i thought that's been dispelled like in the, <laughs> the 1500s Woo! Somebody, wow somebody said well that would obviously be going faster downrange all right on okay. the heart when you're ready i'm ready Okay, that's good. Well, it was aiming for here, but it hit a little high, made a little mark right there, so it was centered. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we can tell on the high-speed camera if it was tumbling or not, but let's try one more. Focus in tight on it and yeah. uh, see what it does. I had to, I had the high-speed zoomed so far out, I was thinking it was gonna, if it missed, I wanted to be able to see how far it missed. You didn't have a lot of faith in these rounds. Though. Well, you never know. This test actually blew my mind. I did not expect Greg to even hit that piece of armored paneling. If we had a three or four inch deviation at 20 yards, well, 40 yards, it should be two or three feet. The round corkscrewed all the way down range, never really fully stabilized, but at the end, it was only a couple inches from hitting that heart. Absolutely surprising. Hit the old heart this time. All right, the heart don't lie. <laughs> When you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. 
Oh. Hit it again. Hit something. That one do. So we've determined these are definitely 25 yard plus rounds. First round, a little high in center. Second round, almost the same elevation. A little bit off to the left. That's amazing. That is amazing. I didn't think you were going to hit it. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of wondering if it even hit the board. Well, that's it. You just got paged into work, so we that's going to have to conclude the testing for today. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. we got some emergencies rolling downrange. Michael, we appreciate you uh, sending these in. They were a kind of a 50-50 mixed bag of failure and mediocrity. <laughs> Which pretty much sums up. That's that's that's. He, that's he challenged us to get him to 4,500 feet per second. Yeah. And I couldn't fit 150 grains of, of uh, E3 in a shell, unfortunately. Yeah, they were all making over 2,000 feet per second, so. Yeah, that's respectable. But half of what I thought they were doing. Maybe things fly faster there in Boise, though. Oh yeah, the air's thinner. The air's thinner. Yeah. The football fields are blue. <laughs> so too many Californians. Anyway, Michael, we thank you for sending these in. We appreciate you guys watching. We're gonna have another one coming up pretty soon that you're gonna be really interested in. So stay tuned, make sure your notifications are on so that you get the notification for this next round. Because don't gonna... subscribe, I don't. I have too many subscribers right now. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to thin them out a little bit. Out. Make sure you unsubscribe. Yeah, we need a few people to voluntarily unsubscribe, unsubscribe. please. Unsubscribe, yeah, you get to be over a million and all of a sudden YouTube just kind of starts yeah, tilting it, to the left. And... Yeah. It's already tilted pretty far away. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to keep OG's Danger Show really, really nice and low. I'm trying to stay around the 23,000 mark. So, oh, you have a channel? Oh, it turns out I have a, a channel, Jeff. If anyone would be interested, uh, go over and take a look at the link right down here. You see it right down here in the, in the description? OG's Danger Show. We do a little bit of everything. Some song, some dance, some bagpipe playing, some shooting. Um, but anyway, come by and see us and subscribe over there too. But we appreciate you tuning in for this one. You guys be safe out there, and we will see you on the next one. OG out. Well, there you go. One of the strangest flying rounds we have ever tested. I was very surprised by the results. My prediction was that these were going to shatter when we shot them, but they stayed completely together, and they were relatively accurate. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and you were surprised too. Thanks for watching, and thank you for rating the video. Good or bad, doesn't matter.